Bonjour, bienvenue à Quebec City et au Château Frontenac for a special edition of the Random Hockey Show. I'm your host, Danielle Fernandez. Despite losing its NHL franchise back in 1995 when the Nordiques moved to Colorado, Quebec City remains a hockey hotbed. Coming up on the show, I'll be checking in on the team that the city does have, as well as make a stop at one of the biggest, definitely one of the wildest events in Canada. This is the Random Hockey Show taking a closer look at the culture of the fastest sport on ice. Outside the Colisee Pepsi, home of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League team, the Ramparts. The Ramparts are number one in attendance for all of the Canadian Hockey League, drawing crowds of more than 10,000 on any given night. We're going to head inside and speak with the team's president, Claude Rousseau, as well as four-time Stanley Cup champion and Hockey Hall of Fame goaltender, their head coach, Patrick Waugh. Patrick, thanks for your time. Merci beaucoup. You're very welcome. You're very involved in this organization from upper management being the GM as well as the owner and the head coach. What is it about the junior hockey lifestyle that uh, inspires you to make the commitment, so to speak? Well, to be honest with you, when I was in the NHL, at the time Pierre Lacroix was uh, my agent, one thing he always said to me, prepare your, uh, your future and uh, try to have something that you would love to do at the end of your career. It's a big, big, big change in your life when you leave the NHL. I mean, be with the players, the traveling, uh, the expectation, the pressure of games and on and on. And um, and uh, for a lot of players, I'm sure when you retire, I mean, it's 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 a big step in your life. In 1996, I, uh, there was an opportunity to uh, buy a junior team. And, uh, and when I was younger, the Quebec Ramparts uh, were in the junior uh, major league in Quebec, the Quebec League at the time, and and my mom were was bringing my brother and I here to the games, and and uh, it was a fun time in my life. And uh, when that window uh, arrived, that opportunity arrived, um, uh, I said, you know what? I mean, it might be something I would love to do when it's over. And uh, and bring back the Quebec round parts was something that I was uh, I thought might be a very good idea. The team's had such great success since you took over the helm in 2005, winning the Memorial Cup that year. Mm -hmm. What is it about your coaching style that translates into effectively motivating these junior hockey players? Yeah, it's nice what you're saying, but at the same time, I was just the coach. We we pull a few good trades, and we brought in a, a player by the name of Alexander Adulov as a as an import player, and then we draft a player by the name of Angelo Esposito. We made a great trade for for Cedric Desjardins, and then Sersen came in in the trade with Rimouski also, and uh, Vlasic was a great draft pick by our scouts, and and we had a very very good group. Then as a coach, I felt that I had not much to do in, in, with that team. I mean, yes, I mean, I had to come prepare. Yes, I had, we, we had a system in place. Yes, we we had a lot of meetings, a lot of discussion about how we want to approach this and that. But overall, the credit should go to the players because they're the one who, who has performed at, the, at that high level. I love to share my past uh, with them, bring some experience, positive or even negative, uh, see how I felt that the player respond to those challenge and and our teams, the team that I played with, how they they, they felt and and what they were willing to do and the sacrifice and it is fun and it's challenging at the same time because this year nobody really expect much about our teammate eh? and uh, when we finished last year last season I should say even us as an organization say. Mm, Maybe we're gonna we're gonna have to go through a tougher year. We're in the top what four in our league, actually three because we're we're third overall. It's a surprise for us, but at the same time, it was a nice challenge uh, for us as an organization to uh, have fun with it. Your son Frederick, Anthony Duclair, of course, mm -hmm. Mikhail Gregorenko, yeah. they're having tremendous years. The playoffs are just around the corner. What do you think are the Ramparts' chances this year? Well, you know what? I like our chance. The three you've mentioned have been, they, they definitely had a very good year. And uh, I'm sure they will perform in the playoffs. And, and uh, we also have other guys on this team that could bring leadership on defense and as a forward as well. And uh, we have two very good goaltenders. Then uh, when you're in a, in a position like this, absolutely you could surprise. And I have no doubt in my mind that um, 
that uh, this team will do whatever it takes to to advance one round at a time. But uh, I'm confident that we could uh, could have a good run. In the future, is there any possibility of seeing you behind the bench of an NHL franchise? Well, I mean, it's going to be tough for me to leave. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know that. I mean, there's been some opportunity in the past. Um, maybe one day I, I will... I will um, I will look at, look at the different challenge, but as we speak, I'm very happy where I am. And uh, but obviously, I mean, every time there's a there's a team that calling or or someone asking me, uh, yes, I'm open to listen. Uh, and maybe one day it's going to be the right decision. Uh, I mean, it'll be the right choice to make and the right uh, right time and and the right team for me. And uh, but as we speak, I have a, I have a great challenge in front of. Uh, we have a great challenge in front of us, and, and I enjoy every minute of it. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you all the best uh, in the playoffs. You're very welcome. I just want to take a moment and talk to you a bit about the business side of the organization. You guys are top of the Canadian Hockey League in terms of attendance, averaging well over 10,000 per game. Mm -hmm. doesn't seem to matter if it's a, a weekday, a tough sell night, or a weekend. You guys managed to put the bums in the seats. Tell me about that. What's your strategy? This weekend will break a, a record not only for the Junior Major Hockey League but also for the CHL uh, because we expect to be over 400,000 fans only for the regular season. And it's based on a lot of components, to be honest. It's, first of all, it's based on Quebec City is a big hockey fan city. Everybody, they are behind their team. They are supporting us. And also we can count on a business community. They are supporting the Ramparts since day one. And that's the reason we can offer a lot of packages for the family. And one thing is really important. We want not only having adults. We, for us, it's pretty important having kids, having the family. They are here. They are having fun. And it's not only a hockey game. It's also a show. Because, well, if we have great sponsors and they are loyal, and that's something very important for us, because they are here since day one. You can imagine now we can offer also cheaper tickets. And that's the reason we have a family package where you can bring your kids here for free. And that's the reason it's based on the sponsorship. And if you have strong sponsors, after that, you can work about you know the, the uh, season tickets. You can work on the advertising surrounding that. And that's the kind of element. But the starting point is really the sponsorship programs and we're pretty lucky we have a big, big sponsors. Yeah, with a season ticket base I heard of around 8,000, that's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, you're bang on. We have 8,500 tickets, season tickets. And this, we, this year we should be around an average of 11,500 fans for, uh, uh, for every game. And you can imagine for us it's great because if you have a lot of fans, it's easy, a little bit easier also to sell your sponsorship programs, you know, there's a chicken and egg situation. If you have only 2,000, well, it's difficult to bring medias. It's difficult to bring also sponsors. But if I can have a big average, now the good news, we can bring medias. We can bring also fans. And that's maybe the recipes for success. All right. Well, I very much appreciate your time. And we wish you all the best uh, in the playoffs and for the rest of the year. And I hope to see you pretty soon in Vancouver. Oh, absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. It's not quite ice hockey, but some of the athletes do have a pass throwing on the skates and handling a puck. We're here at Red Bull Crash Ice, the Quebec City version. I've been chatting with the athletes a little bit and they tell me that Quebec City is definitely the toughest of all four events. The other ones being Minnesota, the United States, as well as Netherlands and Sweden. So far the fastest times are in the low 50s and this track weaves all the way through the streets of Quebec City and is absolutely phenomenal to watch the speed these guys go at. So we're going to get some more feedback and the finals go later. Here with Travis Nagata, hailing from Vancouver, British Columbia, also known as my hometown. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm great. So what was it like out there? I saw lots of slips and falls. How was your run? It's just a battle getting down this ice. With the rain, it's really wet, really soft. It's hard to get a grip on the ice. So is this your first uh, event? And if not, tell me about your past events. Uh, this is my fourth year in Quebec City. Uh, it's my first year on the tour. Do you guys have to fund your own trips or do you get sponsors or does Red Bull chip in? Tell me about the behind the scenes component. Okay, so uh, being on the tour, I'm in the top 32 in the world. 
what happens is um, Red Bull will cover us for race days. We just have to find our own way out there. So I have to pay for my flight into Europe, flight in, uh, into the States. I have to pay my flight here. But once I'm here, they take care of everything. So hotel, food, everything like that? Everything, yeah. And they put us in the most beautiful places. And if you win, you get? First place gets 3,000 euros, which is 5,000 Canadian. And it just it basically works the top eight get paid. The money, the yeah. cash. I have to. I need it. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 22. And what do you do when you're not uh, risking your life going hundreds of miles an hour down ice? I risk my life at home. I'm a firefighter in Burna Burnaby. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck. Thank you very much. Here with Martin from Germany, one of the athletes competing here at Red Bull Crash Ice, Quebec City. How's it going out there? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm uh, on the second place right now after the time running, so I think uh, we have a lot of fun this evening. <laughs> You're in second place, so what was your running time? Uh, about 53 seconds. That's huge. So obviously this isn't your first event. Tell me about your past and what led you here. No, it's not. Um, uh, in 2010, I won the World Championships. 22 years old, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well, good luck. We wish you all the Thank best. <laughs> okay, I'm here in Quebec City, and it's Red Bull Crash Ice, and the crowd is absolutely nuts. The guys are going down. We're almost at the finals. It's going to be huge. That wraps up the Quebec City edition of the Random Hockey Show and what a week it was. Had a great time checking in on the well-oiled machine that is the Quebec Ramparts. Chatting with Claude Rousseau, the team president, as well as the head coach, Patrick Waugh. Looks like they're going to make a great run into the playoffs. And Red Bull Crash Ice, what can I say about that? There are really no words to describe that event. Over 100,000 people lining the streets of old Quebec to watch Kyle Croxall, the newly crowned 2012 champion of Crash Dice. Big shout out and congratulations to him. And again, thanks for watching the Random Hockey Show. I'm your host, Danielle Fernandez.